Hey, Nerd Faithful, this is Rick from The Big Bang Life. I'm here with artist guest of honor, uh, Todd Lockwood. He's here joining us at JordanCon 7. Uh, Todd, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. So, you're well known for, uh, most notable for your, uh, probably your book covers uh, from the R.A. Salvatore series, Drist, uh, most of you might be familiar with. Um, I'm sure you're asked this a lot, but what kind of got you into fantasy art? Um, I've always enjoyed fantasy. I, I grew up on science fiction, but honestly one of my earliest memories is uh, Maleficent turning into the dragon as seen through the family windshield. Yeah. The, the family car had a drive-in. Uh, might have had an impact on me. Right. <laughs> Now, did you just jump into it as a profession, or did you receive any, like, instruction? Oh, I went to an art, art school, Colorado Institute of Art. It's now the Art Institute of Colorado. I guess the CIA wasn't the initials they wanted. <laughs> prior to, uh, prior to uh, going to school for it, what, uh, what kind of experience did you have prior to that? I, I just drew all my life, since before yeah. I can remember, I had a pencil in there. I learned to draw really by making my own comic books, really? which in my mind I was drawing a movie or a TV show. I was telling myself stories. <laughs> <laughs> now, was there a particular piece of artwork that you did when you, you know, in your early years that kind of like reinforced to you that yeah, I'm I'm meant to do this for? for I think I just always knew. I mean, I was the kid whose stuff was always up on the wall in the classroom. Or, I can remember in sixth grade, I was just drawing a, a, a battle scene. There was a castle and knights were attacking. We've probably seen Ivanhoe recently or one of those old, you know, classics. Right. And I remember the teacher came by and I wasn't supposed to be doing that. She said, I want that when you're done. I thought, oh, I, should. I have screwed up. But no, she just wanted to hang it up. <laughs> so I got encouraged. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, I'm guessing, did you also have other supports in your life that kind of propelled you forward? Well, both my parents were artistic. Okay. I think, uh, I think they they lived vicariously through me for a while. <laughs> my dad was a civil engineer and my mom was a housewife because that's what women were in the 60s. Right. But uh, either one of them could have had a career in art if they had chosen to pursue it. What kind of art did they do? Did they do anything fantasy related? Um, well, my dad cartooned a lot, but he did a painting when he was 19, a watercolor, of all the Disney characters that uh, you wouldn't know it wasn't done by somebody at Disney. It's, it's just an amazing thing. It's yeah. kind of a family treasure. Absolutely. <clears throat> In fact, his dad moved the family from Rhode Island to California to take a job with an animation studio. And he got homesick and moved them all back to Rhode Island right before that studio was acquired by Disney. So, you know, but for homesickness, who knows what what, what path might have pursued. All right. Is there a particular piece of art, like from your childhood, from presently, um, that you're probably most proud of that you've ever done or gotten the most recognition for? Oh, that's, uh, like asking me which one of my children is my favorite. I mean, some of them are still hanging around. They all have qualities that I'm proud of and things that maybe could be better. And there's, there's some that I wish I hadn't sold. And uh, the same is true of my artwork. So. <laughs> now, do any of your kids uh, do any artwork? Um, my youngest is shows the most interest, but none of them chose to pursue art. They're all uh, artistic. My son liked to draw a lot, and he likes to write now, too. Um, my oldest daughter does scrapbooking, and you know that's her outlet. And I think maybe she chose something where she didn't have to live up to professional dad. I don't know, but uh, none of them really showed a, a spark of interest, and I didn't want to push them. Uh, I was kind of pushed, and I, I didn't want to push them. You know, I, I wanted to do comic books. My parents said, oh, no, you can't make a living doing that. So I ended up 15 years in advertising, hating it. 
I was ready to hang up my brushes and get a real estate license. But uh, then I learned about conventions and started started coming. I went to uh, Worldcon in Winnipeg in '94, and uh, just hungry to get work in this industry. So I went to every party and met everybody I could. And two years later, TSR hired me. So it's kind of a crazy whirlwind looking back to think that so much happened in so little time. But and, and you've been doing the artwork for uh, all the Arve Salvatore novels. Yeah, I started doing cover for him when I worked at Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. We had just finished up uh, the redesign of Dungeons and Dragons for the third edition release. And uh, he had some books coming up, so we had to redesign Drizz. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget it. I got Bob's number. It was the first time I'd ever spoken to him. And I called and told him I, I needed to redesign Drizzt to kind of update him for the third edition. I asked him, so what does Drizzt wear? And he said, I, I don't know. Ask one of my fans. <laughs> <laughs> So I just went with what I thought would look good. And then later I learned, oh, he has to have mithril mail because uh, Bruner gives it to him. But I designed these leather doves and I just rationalized that he's a ranger. He's not going to run around twinkling in the forest. I'll, 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 I'll put the mithril under the leather. And eventually in a painting, uh, it's one of uh, he and uh, Artemis fighting in the cavern. I slashed his leather so you could see the mithril through it. It was like, there, see, he has mithril. <laughs> <laughs> now, I guess your relationship working with Ari Salvatore, that sounds like he's been yeah, very we, relaxed. Yeah, we've, we've, we've become gone. friends. He's, he's a great guy. I yeah. have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, he, he has some fantastic uh, pieces of uh, work in all, all the books. I've, February was when I first started reading some of his books pretty heavily. I think I read seven in the month of February. Oh, wow. And just looking at the pictures of the artwork that you've done on them is just so inspiring. Um, one particular piece of artwork that myself and a, several of the Big Bang Life crew uh, really liked was the uh, Thousand Orcs piece. And I actually got two, uh, two, two copies of that from this week and uh, okay. uh, been coveting those in my hotel room. Um, that painting, uh, um when Hasbro bought Wizards of the Coast, we knew that they would come and they would lay off art staff because they're a big corporation and that's how big corporations go. So when that book cover came into the pipeline, it was one of the last things I did on staff. I just was determined to uh, show them what they were passing up. Yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> I, was, what? I was determined to knock that one out of the park. So that was like one of your major motivators was that? Yep, yeah, it was sort of a f*** <laughs> you to Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> can can I, I say that on camera? Oh, we can beef it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you done any artwork outside of the fantasy genre? Not a lot. No, I, I'm, I've been kept so busy that uh, you know, I don't, I don't get to do very many pieces for me. Um, there's a couple of black and white pieces that are getting quite old now. Uh, one is Kali Prakriti and the other is Cerberus. You can find those on my website in the uh, miscellaneous gallery. And what website is that? Uh, ToddLockwood.com. ToddLockwood.com. And uh, those were done for myself. They're graphic pieces. And, um, they're, at the time, I was reading a lot of Joseph Campbell and getting very interested in mythology around the world and how they all affected each other. And so there's sort of my take on, on Cerberus and my take on Kali Prakriti, sort of combining two goddesses into um, an you know, mother mode. And then there was a third painting that I'd always wanted to do, the following in, in that vein. And uh, I got the opportunity in 2004, I think, when uh, Bullseye Tattoo commissioned me to do a poster, they said, you can paint whatever you want as long as it looks like a tattoo on someone's back. And so I, I did this War of Angels painting, which is angels and demons battling. And uh, you can find that on my website, too. You might have to hunt around a bit. Actually, I'm about to launch a new website, so. What, when do you plan to do that? Very, very soon. <laughs> as, as we speak, my assistant is back home 
oh, wow. loading images from the old website into the new ones, Great. getting it ready to, to well, launch. So. Well, by the time we launch this video, hopefully that'll be all of yeah, it ready to go. It, and it, it will still be tallaco.com, but it will be redesigned right. and much easier to navigate and find things. So, so I guess the last question I want to ask you is, uh, it's, it's an important one, what advice do you have for people that are kind of like up and coming um, artists or you know, our artists that just want to draw for the, the fun of it as a hobby? Well, draw and draw and draw and draw. Draw from life. Uh, don't draw from your head. I mean, we all learn that way. Um, but there comes a point where you're just drawing routines and uh, the real world has so much more to tell you than, than what you think you know about it. It's like uh, Every second grader knows that a face is an oval with two almonds that have circles in upside down. Seven is a nose. Well, those are symbols. A, a nose doesn't really look like an upside down seven. It would be frightening if it did. Um, so you have to evict those symbols and start observing how things really look. Study light, um, concentrate on perspective and anatomy. Those are all really important. And if you're serious about it as a trade, then get an education. Don't reinvent the wheel. You know, we all stand on the shoulders of people who solved all, the, all these problems for us. Well, and go to conventions, Yes. meet the artists that you admire and, and others and be seen and see work and, and be inspired and don't be afraid to be humbled because you will be. <laughs> I certainly was. The first convention I went to, I met Michael Whalen there, and, uh, stood in front of one of his originals for the first time, and was absolutely floored. So. Awesome. Well, um, I want to thank you for being here today and taking the time for, for us to have an interview with you. Um, uh, just for you nerd faithful out there, at the end of the, near the end of this video, uh, we'll have a few pieces of artwork that Todd has done, and uh, we'll definitely also include some of the websites that, that he can act you can access them at, whether it be it be Twitter, Facebook, or your website at toddlockwood.com. Uh, Todd, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and have a great day. You too. All right, later, nerd faithful. Cut. Thank you so much. Let's talk.